Hello and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Form Scan on IrishRacing.com ahead of the big Cora Oaks weekend. Starting tomorrow, I'm joined by Mark Boylan to preview um, most of the action. And I mean, Mark, are you heading to the Cora? Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, I'll be going to the car on Saturday, hoping I don't need the, too much of an umbrella or waterproof with me. I think the, the Met Aaron forecast doesn't seem to be the most promising in the world for Saturday, but Sunday is nice. And uh, in fairness, the two cards on both days, I think they're, they're decent cards, particularly Saturday. There's, there's lots of good group races, even away from the big one, the Irish Oaks. But uh, it's an open Oaks, and I think there's you know there's chances there, hopefully, for punters to try and uh, stick their noses in front. But uh, yeah, look, looking forward to it. And obviously, you're in the Rebel camp with the car colours out on Sunday. I hardly think we'll see you at the car then, will we? I'm kind of waiting to see. Uh, I think in about an hour's time, I should know if I have tickets for the match or not. So I'd, I'd say if I don't get them, I might have a sad day up in the car tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think it is a cracking car tomorrow, though. So I, I, I wouldn't mind going up there now, to be honest. But yeah, if I, if I head to Coe Park, I might give it a skip, I'd say. But I'd say we'll dive straight into the action because I'd say we've plenty to talk about here. And we'll go through all the group action and a couple of handicaps in there as well. So I suppose we'll start on Saturday in the 2.35, um, the David Power Memorial Handicap. It's over the six furlongs and just a quick look at the bedding there and it's Heavenly Power who will be a fitting winner of this race for the Power family and Eddie Lynham in there at five to one. Mr. Wagru for John Quinn, the English Raider, always to be feared, I suppose, coming over here in five to one as well. And my mate Alfie won the dash on Derby weekend here at the Cora for Jur Lines and at seven to one. Mark, did you have a fancy in this one? But look, at it. I, my eye is always drawn in Irish sprint handicaps and you see a British train runner coming over because the strike rate is just so strong and um, just generally even at the top level of sprints, Irish horses do tend to struggle a little bit against uh, the British counterparts. Uh, and Mr Wagyu, uh, you know, I think he makes sense for all that his age isn't exactly attractive here. But in fairness to him, I'm not saying he's the, the horse he was two years ago when he, when he won this race, but he has been running very solid. I think he's had five runs this year. He's been second three times, third another I think he's could be six or seven pounds lower than when he won this race. So, um, you know, he, he's, he's got a nice type of profile for it if he's able to rediscover even not form that was quite as good as when he won. And I think it, a little bit less might be able to do it. But look at the heart would be telling you Heavenly Power would be lovely if that was able to, to win, uh, given the loss of David Power in, in the last week or so. And um, I suppose a rock solid one is my mate Alfie. You know, he really, really likable type, just seems to keep turning up, running his race. You know, maybe of 103, it's, it's going to be a tricky task, but uh, good last time here in, in a listed race on, on Derby weekend. Um, I wouldn't like to be, you know, opposing him too strongly, but I just thought Mr. Wagyu at, at the weights and with his profile in the race before, he'd be right pen and fall. Yeah, it's always dangerous seeing those um, British sprinters coming over challenging and John Quinn does well with those types as well. I was kind of drawn to Greek Flower here for John Fiend. He's stable or in, or in fairly good form. I think he's a 30% strike rate there in the last three weeks. I just thought she ran probably a career best last time in the Rockingham. She went up seven pounds for that, in fairness. But she was she was best to the group. Um, there was the, the winner that day, um, Amazon Lady. She broke away on her own. There on, on the on the rail side and the rest of them came down the other side. She beat everything in the group. Um, I think she's probably been in the form of her life so far this year. Her run behind She's Quality in Down Royal as well. She probably didn't get the clearest run that day. She's Quality kind of franked that again afterwards um, off a rating of 103, I think. And she runs in a group three later on in the day as well. So I think um, she's an improving filly. The stable are flying. She'll be there at each way prices, 10 to 1 there. You might get her 12 to 1 somewhere else as well. Um, I think she's got a good each way shout, but yeah, I do have big respect for the for the UK challenger, like you mentioned. But we'll go on to the three oh five, then the Sapphire Stakes, and she's quality who I mentioned here. Um, lines up for Jack Davison, but the favourite is another uh, UK challenger, believing for George Bowie and Ryan Moore. I suppose the form of her two fourths in Royal Ascot's looking quite good now, um, particularly that run in the um, Queen Elizabeth the second stakes. I suppose with the first and second that day fighting out the sorry the second and third that day fighting out the um, July Cup last weekend, she'd probably be hard to beat. Mark, I'm probably going to be in her camp myself. Yeah, it is tricky to take her on. I suppose the the query for me is just how much rain falls. Like if it really does begin to come, and you think of how quick the ground would have been at Royal Ascot in comparison to what it might be if the rain did continue, uh, that'd be the only angle I can see. But really trying to take her on, um, because look at as you've outlined rightly, she does set the standard. Um, but I, if it did get into the ground, I think Makarova is nearly the value there because you know she will absolutely cope with it. Good winner last time in the Coral Charge, uh, five furlongs at Sandown, soft ground, um, comes in in good form. And even 
for all that that was group three level and you know believing is coming with a higher standard of form this season some of Makarova's runs last season I thought were real rock solid she beat the length of three quarters uh, behind Highfield Princess in the Abbey you know she she's not she's not a bad mare by any means so um yeah look at again we're kind of leaning towards the British train runners here aren't we in, in, in races like this um probably Anna Sierra is the pick of the home team although I know she's also declared for the Minster Stakes on Sunday too um a run of a reproduction of her run in the Greenlands that have put her right in the picture but I do feel the visitors are just going to have the stronger hand. And I, Makarov at the price if the range is going to the ground, but I get where you're coming from totally. Yeah, I suppose the forecast is not is a bit mixed for the car, so it's kind of hard to know what it's going to come up, up, up on on the day. I imagine they'll take a bit of rain before changing it. But um, yeah, like you said, believing her best form has been on bit, at a better surface. So probably one to watch on the day how soft it gets as well. But I'd say she could be fairly hard to beat there with Ryan Moore taking the reins. But we'll go on to the feature race of the day. The Irish Oaks 340, wide open contest like you alluded to before. Maybe a little bit surprising for some that Ryan Moore has taken the ride on content after her fine effort in the Pretty Potty last time, though. Um, that was definitely career best, so you can see the reasoning behind it. They've also got Port Ferry in there at about 5-1. to one. She won the Ribblesdale, and second that day, Lava Stream lines up as well for David O'Mara. Lope Delilas, another really interesting one, for Willie Mullins and James Doyle, comes in here really un- unexposed, but eye-catching, I suppose, that Watland Racing have invested in the Mullins yard. Um, Mark, look, there's so many years to talk about. Um, who were you drawn to first, I suppose? Well, I, I pick up where you left off. I, I, I like Lope Delilas as well, and... Uh, for what they never got a taste for uh, winners at Willie Mullins, God, God uh, help us if they ever decide to change their uh, attention to national hunt with them because that is that is fairly diversified things, wouldn't it? But uh, I look at re- really like this filly. Um, I know you might look at it and go, the price she is kind of six to one ish for a classic on the back of winning a maiden that the form hasn't worked out spectacularly in, but I, I just loved how she went about it. She's big girl, strong girl. You just l- love her the, the way she does. I think actually race IQ looking at there. Um, stride uh, figures for the, that day at Leperstown, biggest stride on, on the car at Leperstown, according to their figures, bigger than Los Angeles. She was quicker than Los Angeles for all that, again, different weights and, and different style of how the race was run, but she was, I think, a second quicker than Los Angeles in the in the trial and a couple of seconds quicker than the handicap over the same distance afterwards. Um, you know, I, I just thought there was an awful lot to like about it. Watnan obviously liked the look of it too. Um, and just seems to be the reports that her piece of work uh, earlier in the week with James Doyle reading Patrick Mullins' comments this week seem to very much please everybody. So I, I, I don't really have a lot of negatives. And I think looking at, OK, her, her lack of experience is a negative. That's that's absolutely something that you could uh, pick at. But I just don't know if this is vintage Irish Oaks territory mm. relative to what we need other years. The first two from Epsom aren't here. It's a real shame Azalea is, is retired because I, I really, really thought she was something a bit special for Donald Weld. Um, but they're not here and, you know, content, nice run last time, but I feel that's one that, that there's improvement required to, to win an Irish Oaks or stamina uh, by Galileo gives her a chance, but on the damn side, wouldn't necessarily scream that uh, with Mecca's angel. But um, yeah, I, I, I just, I, at the prices, she, she had tightened up a little bit too much for my liking during the week. She just began to come back out. I think six to one, 13 to two, we can see in the place possibly. Um, I, I'd be happy to back her each way anyway, at the very least up to Lee, as I think she's really smart fully in the making. Yeah, definitely really interesting one there. And yeah, the eye is just drawn to that. Willie Mullins, I think, replicating Paddy Mullins. How many years ago was it now? Uh, vintage Chippel winning the Irish Oaks. It'd be nice if Willie could do it as well. But just kind of going on to the Bally Doyle Phillies, were you surprised by the jockey bookings? I suppose Port Ferry, Royal Ascot winner, won, won the Ribblesdale. The form of that, maybe not up to scratch. Lava Stream, was she 79 when she went into the race that day? She was 20 to 1 second, um, obviously gone up a lot for that run. She's improving, Philly, but I wouldn't really rate that to be classic quality. Um, or maybe be, being a little bit harsh on them. No, I just looked at the, the jockey bookings have kind of t- tell you what you're thinking is is, is fairly mm-hmm. correct, I suppose, if, if we're to take that line. And like she was 12 to 1 when she won the Ribblesdale as well. It wasn't like she seemed to be particularly strongly fancied. Um, and yeah, maybe on homework, content could be the one that just shows a bit more and is worth a flyer. I, I just think even there, the fact there is a little bit of discrepancy that people were, were wondering which one it would be would tell you that there's not one standout to have to beat. Yeah. And that's probably giving me a little bit more confidence at Lope to Lila. But I think War Chimes is, you know, that could easily run very well for David Manisier, a trainer I have a lot of time for. And I like the fact they've gone with a local booking and Jamie Heffernan too. Um, and again, style of how she came home at Epsom. I just wonder, would the car actually play to her strengths a bit more? If there was rain, I, I don't think that'll inconvenience her either. Um it's just it's it's a very very open race and 
in those scenarios, I like to look at the one with, with, with potential and upside and maybe the experience of others will, will, will come through. But, um, you know, I, I just, I, maybe these bad eye fillies, when they do get on a roll, they're so hard to stop. And, you know, even with a view to Sunday's race, I was looking back at Jackie O's profile last year, where she goes from winning a maiden and looking to maybe have a level at maybe listed group comp, group three company. And all of a sudden she's knocking on the door of group ones. They can get on a roll. So I, I'm loath to stand here and say that Port Ferry are um, content aren't group one fillies because it can just happen there. But um, just right now with the prices we're dealing with, that's just the way I'm leaning with Lope to lead us. Yeah, I, I, I probably, I, I actually was siding with content a little bit even before seeing the jockey bookings. I just thought that run in the Pretty Polly last time behind, you know, two really, really good fillies, Blue Saki and Emily Upjohn. It was a massive step forward from everything we've seen from her this season. Um, I suppose the two low-key efforts before that will put little bits of doubts in your mind, but I'm sure they'll be fairly gunning to get that Galileo 100 Group 1 winner, and she, she'd be lining up to do that as well. He's on 99 at the moment. But I did I did think Paddy, Paddy Toomey's Purple Lily was way overpriced here. It was around 18 to 1. Um, like Looking at that run in the Curra, she, she didn't run bad at all um, on, on Guinea's Day in the Curra. Obviously a strong race that day. Connections seem to think the step up and trip will suit her down to the ground. And even going back to her run in Navin, only beaten half a length by Azealia when, when um, Billy Lee lost his iron in the last 50 yards as well over the 10 furlongs. I think if she stays the trip, that 18 to 1 is going to look like a massive price. And they seem to be fairly confident that the, that the step up will be no trouble to her. So, look, like you said, it's it's a massively open race. Um, might be worth looking at one at each way prices. But um, I, I'd say Ryan Moore could be on the best of the Valley Doyle fillies. Uh, on content there hopefully but we'll go on to the 4.15 there the Comer Group International Cora Cup interesting to see Luke Comer Jr taking the reins um, on a couple of Comer trained horses in this uh, sponsored race but it looks like they're probably making up the numbers on ratings anyway at least 100 to 1 and 250 to 1 here um, but look I suppose it's a kind of a replay of the Yorkshire Cup in a way Vauban and Tower of London both behind Gio Valletto that day they're in here even our sorry joint favourite at seven to four and Shamida an interesting one I thought as well for Dermot Wells and Chris Hayes coming here after a 10 month layoff um look Vauban I suppose his stamina was tested to the very limit in the gold cup last time do you think he can bounce back here dropping back in trip that's the kind of question because I I, I do think that the gold cup is just a step too far from distance wise like he, he won a mile and a half on soft ground at Nace last year if I remember correctly he, he's not a slow horse Vauban and even as a hurdler he's plenty of gears in, in that discipline um it is just whether you know you're coming back 30 days on from a, a, a very very tough run like that um that's the question mark but who else would you want in your corner other than willie mullins to try and pull off something like that you know he's he's the man to to, to be able to um you'd wonder whether these horses the, t- the two of them tower of london and vauban could they have melbourne in mind later in the year um tower of london i, I love the way he, he came home when he when he's won his races abroad earlier in the season didn't catch fire it didn't happen for him last time I know to walk to O'Brien before Roy Lascott for a stable tour and he seemed to be in the picture to possibly run on something like a Hardwick stakes there so it's not like he totally missed a lot of time in the sense of you know he, he was being considered to run a few weeks ago at Roy Lascott um, but I just don't like that kind of gap of nine weeks just kind of, to me it's it's just not ideal you wonder whether in the meantime obviously a disappointment run at York has has he not come to the table in that period Um it, it's a messy race for me, Emma. I, I kind of, if you've gone to head, I probably just prefer Vauban. But when you have that maybe international target in mind for the two of them potentially later in the year, um, you, you just don't know what whether you're going to get a hundred percent version of either of them. Um, I, I don't see the winner coming from outside of them, but uh, Vauban just marginally. But mm. it's 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 one it's one of the kind of trappy races. I, I like Shamida too, but just the layoff as well. She's off for two hundred ninety four days. Um, loved her profile last year, but. You'd imagine Dermot Well could be aiming towards the autumn with her potentially. Yeah, you'd imagine so. I'm not really sure what the what the problem was that kept her off the track, but being off for ten months, um, look, I'm sure he'll have her ready enough to run here. But uh, look, I, I I'd probably take a chance in her each way, thirteen to two. She might be bigger on the day. Um, I thought she just had a really progressive profile last year. She won a Saint Ledger trial here, beating uh, Down Rising. Um, she's not a flashy fitty at all. You know yourself. Um but she's really really tough um they thought she might have been a group one contender as well she went over to france and tried it maybe uh, disappointed slightly on the day but um i still think she could she could improve again from three to four obviously had had her issues starting off late this season but i'm sure Dermot weld will have her ready enough on the day 
Robin, maybe just a slight question mark. Um, just coming from such a tough race in the Gold Cup, um, coming back here. Look, Willie Mullins, like you said, if anyone's going to get him back, it will be him. It's it is it is a tricky race. I'd probably marginally side with Shamida, but if Robin was at his best in the day, he 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 probably will be fairly hard to beat. But we go on to the four fifty. Um the handicap over the 10 furlongs i think you had a fancy in here mark even though we've no prices here yet so it's a little bit hard to predict possibly yeah no i, I just like the look of siege try here i thought it was interesting the connections were going to have a crack at trying to exploit a mark of 88 because she's a very well-bred filly and you know i think she's a half to buckaroo place at group one level and um, middle earth is right there in the pedigree two group three winner who ran well at royal ascot um she's bred to be very smart by siuni and I catch her first time up at Nace, uh, tactical race, just got touched off by serialized. Slightly disappointed she didn't, wasn't able to show a bit more of Gorm. Rightly back on track last time at the Curra, 10 furlongs. Today's trip really suited her. Um, as far as handicaps go, I think I, I look at a lot of them here. Some of them will, will have more experience than her for sure, but I feel the upside for her to potentially be another level above them. It is there. And Johnny Murta, he's always a man on these, these weekends. He seems to pop up with a handicap winner out of somewhere. So um, at the Curra, I, I just like the profile of her for all the 10 stone and affiliate. It's not ideal, but the fact they're coming here, surely it means that they think there's an opportunity to exploit maybe on the way to better things. Very good one to watch out for there. And yeah, Danny Martin normally pops up with something on the on these big weekends. One who I actually forgot to mention in here, Cora Wood in the, in the opening maiden. Um, I just thought he was really eye-catching first time out in the form of that maiden has actually worked out quite well as well. Um, he was kind of, I suppose, a track or horse for plenty of people after that. He was kind of drawn out wide that day and the race kind of seemed to develop down the inner um, with has Dan and Green Impact. Um, there was a few really well Bally Doyle, uh, really well bred Bally Doyle Colts in there as well that day and Black Four is that kind of one in particular who's came out from in behind them and and has um, gone on. He's going to run on Sunday here at the Curve as well. So, I think he's probably going to be fairly hard to beat there um, in on the opening race for Paddy Toomey. I, I thought he shaped quite well and should be a lot sharper for the experience first time out as well. But we'll go on to Sunday's card, then um, another good ra- day of racing at the Curra. And we will start off, I think, with the 210, the Anglesey Stakes Group 3 for the two, for, sorry, for the two-year-olds over the six furlongs. A couple of, couple of these, I suppose, coming on a bit of a comeback mission. Camille Pissau or one, I suppose, the choice of Ryan Moore here. Disappointed in Ascot and was beat the time before in the Cora as well. Kind of somewhat surprisingly by Arizona Blaze. Um, Celtic Chieftain, another one who went to Ascot. Disappointed then again in Tipperary. Babouche for Jura Lions is one coming here. Don't know probably a whole pile about him as, com- as compared to the rest. But it was really, really impressive winning at Cork on debut. On the tissues, he's looking like the likely favourite, Mark. Did you, were you impressed by him in Cork? Uh, look, it'd have to be. I thought it was a real wow performance. Um, you know, well-bred filly. She's a sister to Zarinsk, uh, Group 2, Group 3, listed winner for Jar and Judmont, and just lo- loads of pace on debut. And I don't think it was a bad maiden either for all that. Some of it is untested, but I think Joe Murphy's one that was fifth or sixth, came out and won. William McCreary's that was second. I thought it was a little unlucky not to win at Nace since... Um, it, I just thought there was an, an awful lot to like about the way she went. Sure. It's f- fairly obvious and you have a type of margin, but um, I, I'm, I'd be very, very disappointed if she wasn't able to be at this level at some stage in her career. To me, the question mark is just whether, as a once race maiden winner, taking on a lot more experienced two year olds, including ones that have had the experience of going to Royal Ascot, uh, you're coming off a different platform. Some of them will be much kind of more, you know, battle hardened by that type of experience, but you know, all the potential is there. And I I, I think it's for my pen and side. And Camille Pizarro, I, I was the same as you. I was disappointed. I think he traded 105 two starts ago at the Curra. He looked like he had the race in the bag and he got beat. Now, maybe to put it down to him being a little bit babyish. Um, and I, if Anthony, I'd nearly give more of a pass for Royal Ascot in a way because he's drawn, you know, on the wrong side. Okay, the winner has maybe come up a little more century, but I think been drawn out in the wing at times there, especially for a two-year-old Royal Ascot, you know, ground was quick. I I think there's a, there's a few different factors there that you could say we'd see a better version of him back here in this company and that he have enough experience now that if they felt the babyishness was what got him two starts ago, that shouldn't be a problem this time. So I think you're going to get a real good read on Camille Pissarro. Um, but as you said, coming back from Ascot, it's not always easy to turn that around with a two-year-old. So I'm going to go with Babouche and, uh, and and stick with what I've seen. And even from a point of view of one winning this race off light uh, if experiences Keiru last year who won it she had just one run a maiden beforehand a filly from Michael Callahan and I think uh, two runs two renewals before that Gerlines won it with a once race maiden winner too so take a bit of encouragement from that with Babouche 
yeah, she was definitely impressive winning in Cork and away. Look professional that day as well, kind of did it on her own down the down the rail side. Kind of depending on how much rain gets into the ground, I, I'm probably willing to forgive Cowder of the County there, one who I haven't mes- mentioned for Joseph O'Brien. I really liked him going going to Ascot. And I don't think he ran that badly. Even um, the form figures will say seven, but he wasn't beaten an awful way, long way in the Coventry. Um, like you mentioned, kind of the, maybe half an excuse for a lot of the Irish two-year-olds at Ascot that could to form ground. He won his maiden here at the Cora beaten whistle jacket on soft to heavy. You know, if the rain got into the ground at the Cora, I'd give him a massive chance. He looks like a big horse as well. He kind of came with his one in Ascot, maybe just kind of petered out a bit, maybe on the ground. He wasn't letting himself down fully. I haven't really heard any solid excuses from the air I suppose but it wasn't a bad one even at all um to finish second in the commentary so I I, I would give him a big chance coming coming back here to the Cora that that's maiden form beating whistle jacket looks really really strong now he's gone on to Frank in time time and again um look kind of wait and see with the prices I suppose but I, I would give him a big chance but I, I'd imagine Babouche will probably be a worthy enough market leader for this um at this stage in a way but we'll go on to the next race we'll give a ch- quick chat about there was actually one i wanted to mention here in the sprint handicap the 245 i just thought the bottom weight here for eddie and patrick Carty, wayne has taking off the five pounds was really really interesting mary shoelaces she's been dropped 11 pounds i think in the last five months um her best form has come in dundalk that's no doubt about that but she has shown a bit on 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 the grass as well i thought her run in down royal two starts ago wasn't too bad at all um making up ground nicely to finish third i just think the handicapper is being quite kind to her here really and you know if she's going to have a big day in the sun this might be it on a big weekend for the hearties um she might she might have just been lined up for this one she hasn't got an awful lot of racing done but she has shown ability and you know she's she was second twice i think off marker 70 and 71 not too long ago that wasn't done dark now and maybe she's just not as effective on the grass but i think you know the handicapper has given her a chance and if she's going to have a big day this could be it kind of wait and see what maybe what price she might be and um, she's out long handicap there you can see it down the bottom of the screen but she's got no weight in her back so look for the hearties they can probably line one up for a big handicap in the car so she's probably just one to watch out for in the market there but we'll go on to the 315 the minstrel stakes group two over the seven furlongs really interesting contest here i thought um no prices up yet but mountain bear i thought an interesting runner ran well behind hatem in the jersey stakes at ascot muster f for jar lions as well coming here searching for the hat trick and lord masseuse a proven kind of campaigner at this level as well mark um this is kind of a tricky enough contest plenty in here who kind of compete well at this level i suppose yeah no completely and i suppose the again kind of that topic of how much rain falls that that'll be very much key to the way i interpret the race because mountain bear for me the best form on offer three-year-old getting weight from his elders you know has been coming back because obviously he had that injury last year at the breeders cup when he ran a huge race second to unquestionable and he's been building back up and you know very much entitled by the comments from aiden uh, at guinea's time was that he really need the run so it was definitely a step forward in the jersey i was very happy with what he did there and I, I i like the way he's going with a view to it but just if it got into the ground given how well he has ran on good to farm and he's running farm ground in america that's just a little query with him um and he was he didn't disappoint too much, but it was one of his lesser runs last season at Doncaster on soft ground. I don't think we're going to be dealing with that softer ground, but it's just an unknown at the moment as to, to what we're dealing with in that sense. So um, I'll be watching weather with him. And if it did get a little bit easy, I think Lord Masseuse's, he's Joe Murphy's horses are in, in a decent string, uh, place at the minute. Thought it was a good win last time. Coming back to seven from a mile, if the ground was easy enough, I don't think it'd be a problem. But he's just kind of a solid horse at this kind of level. Um, and when, he, when one of these is in good form like him, um, I think it's easy enough to make a case for him. There's another one, like Mutis Arif, he's another one that will keep popping up at this type of level as well. But um, no, I just feel Lord Masseuse, he's, he, he, if Mountain Bear is to underperform, he's the one that'd be ready to pick up the scraps, I think. Yeah, I, I thought it looked a good opportunity for Mountain Bear as well. Like you said, getting the kind of weight from his elders. Um, I suppose that second in the Breeders' Cup Breeders Cup juvenile uh, turf was probably the standout injured after that obviously he looked fresh I, I thought on Guinea's day at the car as well didn't disgrace himself at all though and like I said that that run at Ascot was good you'd imagine you know if he's going to pick up a, a race at this level this looks like a fairly good opportunity for him um so yeah I, I thought I thought he was probably the one to go for here and no prices yet obviously but on the tissue they have a muster f11 to four favorites lord masseuse on the 30 and four to one mountain bear so that wouldn't be too bad at all i don't think if that was the way it came up on the day but we'll go on to the 420 the meadow court stakes 
Jackie O was one who I actually had been worrying, wondering for a while where she had gone to. You mentioned her earlier on in the show, Mark. Um, she was really, really progressive, I suppose, last autumn. Her, her form kind of took on a new level and she comes back here after a nine-month layoff, I think, under Ryan Moore. And again, it looks like a kind of a nice enough opportunity for her to come back um, if she, considering she might take the run. American Sonia looks the obvious changer for Joseph. Um, she's coming back after a bit of a disappointment in Saratoga as well. Um, on ratings, she seems to be pretty well treated here. Um, kind of hard to take her on, I would say, Mark. Yeah, it's it just, a, again, a fit, fitness query or a sharpness qu query after these two, seven, four days away. That, that's a, it's not a straightforward one to, to come back from, but she is, she brings the best form to the table and a reproduction of that and like the, the second in the pre Opera, the second in the Blanford, the third on Champions Day, you know, they're all going to be good enough to win this. But we have just seen runners, you know, like her come back and be entitled to sharpen up and, and get fitter. I think the market would be a good guide on her, where she might be potentially as well. Um, and if there was a bit of value there, I'm only sorry that there's uh, seven runners here. If we got the three places each way, I'd really like to have a look at Royal Dress each way. But I'll just be keeping an eye on her maybe in the, in the without market. Um, because I think there's bits about her this season that have suggested she could be up to nabbing a race like this potentially. You know, one in listed company, uh, first start back this season at Goodwood on soft ground. I like the way she dug in. And watching back the run at Epsom two starts ago, just didn't get a clear run. It didn't happen for her. She's still only beaten three quarters of a length. I thought it was a, a really solid run. Maybe Royal Ascot in a, in a really competitive Duke of Cambridge. Maybe that was just a little step too high. But I would also say she was probably got a little bit further back than the ones that played a key role at the finish. Um, really very much in the second half of the field. Couldn't really get involved from there. And, you know, when you're pitching maybe into a very competitive race with one who I feel this type of race is, is you know, is, is, is more suited to, um, you know, I, I think there's plenty going for it. Again, if there was a bit of rain, she's won on soft ground before, but I don't think she's totally dependent um, you know, and again, British runners have had just such a, a brilliant run of things over here. When the other day I sat down, I was looking at the top uh, horses in Ireland on race and post ratings the other day, and, and when you categorize them for the top down, there's so many that are trained brackets in GB. You know, it's uh, if they've had a fantastic run of it over here so far this season, and you know, between the sprints on Saturday, I think they'll have they'll have a good day. But um, I think Royal Dress could be one that runs the price as well, maybe in the without market could be one to keep an eye on. Interesting, and Ben Cohen knows her really well, went over to the UK to ride her a few times already this season, so nice one there, interesting to see what price she will show up at. Um, Mark, we'll wrap it up there, I think we've gone through a fair share of the races at the Curl, but before we will go, I'll ask you for maybe a nap of the weekend. Oof, I'll actually look, we'll go with the big race, try and go for the big cheese, we'll go at Lopez de Lilas and the Irish Oaks on Saturday. Love the Lila, stick with William Mullins, you can't go too wrong, I suppose. <laughs> um, look, I, I, I'd probably go for one each way. I think Greek Flower should run a massive race in the David Power Memorial Handicap. Um, the sprint, thought she ran a massive race in the Rockingham. She should be each way prices and stables in good form. She's kind of in the form of her life. So hoping she can kind of back up that Rockingham run with another big performance at the car. But thanks a million, Mark, uh, for all your contributions. Uh, enjoy the car tomorrow. And anyone who's listening, enjoy the racing and make sure to gamble responsibly over the weekend. Thank you.